So today, you're going to see a very special video and a very special bike that is six months in the making. Okay, not really. Really what happened is that I tried to ride this bike in December, but because of 12 degree wintry conditions, I was really unable to give you guys a real review of this bike. But today, it's a beautiful day here in Pittsburgh, and today, I get to ride this red beauty, the Ibis Mojo 3. Let's get at it. So when I ride a demo bike, um, I really try to put as much time on the bike as I can. Uh, it's really ranging from three to five hours. Um, and when I do that, I really do try to find the best trails to exemplify all different types of conditions, whether that's flat, that's fast, that's rocky, climbing and, and descending. Uh, this right here is a kind of Burmy switchback piece, so it'll be fun. God, this thing is really, really fun. Oh, missed that turn. <laughs> Paying attention to the bike too much and not the trail, not a good thing, right? So, like what I was saying before, um, I really do try to um, put a whole different types of mix, not just fire road climbing, but twisties, um, prolonged, that kind of stuff, uh, to really get to know the bike as much as I can for you guys that are watching. The rear wheel is so, it's like, uh, it's like tucked back under, underneath me. taking that faster. I don't know why it didn't. Unfortunately, it sounds like I got a little bit of a mechanical, uh, not really more like of an, an air mechanical of some sort. So uh, I'm going to try to do my best to uh, <laughs> continue this review. You know, I was just saying that this took about six months in the making to do. And this just might be another thing that I'm not going to be able to do, at least today. Uh, so far, the bike has felt awesome. Um, it sounds like I might have burped a tire. And unfortunately, I do have a, a pump. It's a small one, though. Uh, and I don't know if there's a slash. It doesn't look like there's a slash or it just burped out, but I can't get it to seal. So, all right, let's try that again, shall we? So, uh, the guys at Trailflow, Tom and Matt, Matt specifically, I wanna thank. Uh, he stopped by inside of the road and uh, dropped off another tire. So, the rear tire now is going to be a knobby neck. It was a high roller to 2.8. And the front remains the um, Minion DHF 2.8.
So let's get at it again. Okay. So the bike immediately, I mean, it feels like it's super nimble despite what the plus tires may look like, you know? Every time I ride a plus bike, at first it just seems so um, cumbersome, you know? But every time, especially when I ride a trail category uh, plus bike, I'm always surprised how nimble it feels. Chunk is good. So I guess you know what this feels like this uh, DW link on a more chunkier climbs feels like the VPP uh, feels like my 5010 when it climbs um, there's a certain kind of feedback that you get from the suspension going through some of the technical climbs but on the downs man it feels good the suspension feels uh, I know these aren't overly big uh, or fast rowdy um, trails but it feels pretty freaking good some roots Awesome, feels good. That was really good. Great. The bike definitely is on the agile side. Um, and not the, the super stable side, which is kind of what you would expect from a trail bike. I want to thank Trail Flow Bikes again for uh, letting me demo this Ferrari Red Ibis Mojo 3. Uh, and again, thank you enough again for hooking me up with a New Year tire, meeting me on the side of the road so that I can give you guys, the viewers, um, this video. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Matt. And if you guys are ever in the Pittsburgh area, let me know. And, uh, and I'll ride with you if I can. And if you want to, certainly check out Tom's demo fleet of Ibis and Yeti. I know he's got a few other surprises uh, of other bikes he's going to carry. So you guys uh, kind of just need to... Uh, Give him a call. Pedaling flat platform on this bike is good. There's barely any bob, even though the shock is wide open. That was cool. 
the rear end, uh, well, both when I'm climbing. Wow, that did it really easy. Uh, the rear end feels like it's right underneath me. Um, good and slow sections like this. I almost hit that tree all the time. This bike changes direction really fast. Again, really feels like a short wheelbase. This bike is really easy to, to hop and jump and stuff like that. Whew, wrong gear. A little booster. Now this thing really is awesome in tight areas. Uh, change in direction is, uh, especially in the slower technical switchbacks is great. Again, really, really good in tight sections. Very controlled. Plus tires really help too. Wow, this thing corners really well. I feel like this bike, like, really wants to hop. Uh, it's really, like really poppy, really easy to put in the air. I'm not a good bunny hopper at all, but uh, this thing's awesome at hopping. So one thing I try to do is to test bikes on a light free ride trail here at North Park. This is Dr. J's. Pose this bike on the drops. The big hits, really supportive. God, this bike loves to get air. Super, super nimble. Light enough. Okay, let's see how it does against the rock garden. Okay, again, super composed. Love it. God, it just clears shit without trying. 
So crazy of a bike. So, after six months and almost another day, I finally got to review the Ibis Mojo 3 for myself and for you guys. You know, with the more and more bikes that I get to ride and to spend my time uh, on, is what I'm finding out is that there are no more bikes out there that is, well, not good. What I'm finding out is that some bikes or particular bikes have special qualities that they do better than others. Um, for example, this. This bike, what I can tell you is that immediately you will feel like this is a very flickable and short wheelbase bike. It's a, it feels like a BMX bike almost. And in that same sense, this bike feels like it really just wants to hop and get in the air. Those are the two things that I immediately felt on this bike. The rear uh, suspension, the DW Link, I feel like it does feel uh, similar to the VPP in that um, with, their, with the bigger hits and everything like that, it feels like it, uh, it really eats up uh, the chunk really well. But on the climbs where there's a little bit more stutter bump uh, type of bumps, like finger-sized uh, bumps, uh, it climbs very well. It's really when it gets a little bit bigger, like fist size uh, obstacles, when you're climbing up, it, 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 it hangs up a little bit. Uh, certainly something that I've uh, noticed when compared to, say, a Yeti or uh, the Trek or a Giant or something like that. Another thing I wanted to uh, bring up is that I rode a size medium Ibis. Um, that is uh, something really worth noting here because if you guys haven't seen uh, my video of the importance of demoing a bike, uh, this is one of the main points. Um, I ride a size small in a Yeti. I ride a size medium in an Ibis and a Santa Cruz. So for you to really feel what the bike was designed for, it really is important for you to ride the proper size for the particular bike. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Have a great day. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. I'll talk to you guys later.